Ooh. All right, I put these first few on here, just basically like the Quizlet game. We're just going to practice evaluating some logs. Let's see what you've got. Log base two of 32. Five, two to the fifth is 32. Good, five. How about this one? Negative one, good, it flipped it over, so it's negative. This one's also reciprocated, so it will also be negative. It'll be negative three, good, perfect. And then log base three of nine, two. I just threw those on there as like a quick little like flashcard kind of thing. All right, log properties, first one we're gonna do. And I'm gonna do two columns of these. I'm gonna do one where it's log base A. A could be any number, like log base two, log base seven, whatever. And then I'm gonna do one with LN. It means the exact same thing. I just write it both because the LN can throw people off and I just want you to know it's the same thing, okay? So first one, and we've done a lot of these. Any log of one gives you zero. Log base anything of one is gonna give you zero. So if you see that was an LN, ln of one is zero. That's not new information. We're just writing it out specifically as a property. That's all. Next one, log base a of a equals one. Again, we've done that too. If you have log base seven of seven, they cancel out and you get one. Or you could think of it as seven to the first equals seven. Are you guys with me here? Like we've done this, right? With LN, it would look like this. LN of E equals one. E to the first equals E. They mean the same thing, it just looks different. So I write it both ways. All right, this one's a little bit new. I mean, like I've kind of mentioned it, but log base A of A to the X. The log base A and the exponential base A cancel. And so you would just get X, like whatever that exponent is. And so over here, if you have ln e to the x, the ln and the e cancel, and you just get x. So it's just whatever that power is. And then the last one. If log base a of x equals log base a of y, then this is an if then. Do you remember in geometry if then statements? If there is no school, then we are happy. If it is snowing, then there is no school. Do you remember all those? Like, and then you had to like reverse them. Like, anyway. if log base a of x equals log base a of y, then what do you think you get to conclude? X equals y. You just set the insides of it equal. And then same thing for ln. If ln of x equals ln of y, then x equals y. This is not different information from this. It all means the same thing. I just write out the LN ones because it looks different and then people like get confused by it. So I write it out twice, but it all means the same thing. So here, let's practice simplifying a couple of these. Log base four of four to the fifth. What do you guys think? That's five. The log base four and the exponential base four cancel, it will just be five. Log base seven of seven, one. Ooh, this one's a little tricky. Was that? Negative four. Why is it negative four? Because it's flipped. The ln and the e cancel would be negative four. All right, any log of one is zero. It doesn't matter that it's log base three. It could be log base whatever. If there's a one there, it's gonna be zero. And then this is 12 to the power log base 12 of 45. Well, the 12 and the log base 12 cancel and you just get 45. Um, so they, they just cancel out because they're inverse. Then we're gonna solve a couple equations. Solve for X. Do you see how both of these are log base three? That's the only reason this works. If one was three and one was seven, you wouldn't be able to do the problem. But since they're both log base three, you take the stuff that's inside and set it equal. and then solve it. What would you do to both sides here? Yep, subtract three, you would get x squared equals 16. Square root and you get plus and minus four. Now you can get a negative answer, but you can't log a negative number. Actually, let's write that down. Cannot log a negative. 
So if you plug it back in and you get a negative inside of the logarithm, you have to get rid of that answer. So let's try this. Let's try the four. Four squared is 16 plus three is 19. So that's positive. If you plug in negative four, negative four squared would be 16 plus three is positive. So we're good. We get to keep them both. So again, you can get a negative answer. You just can't have a negative when you plug it back in. Is this making sense? Because a lot of you are like glazed over. You're going to have a test on this eventually. Stick with me. All right here. Do you see how these are both just log? Oh, we haven't talked about that in a minute. What does that mean the base is? Oh, good. Well remembered. They're both 10, so you're going to set these parts equal. 2x minus 11 equals 5x plus 1. Make your algebra 1 teacher proud. What are we going to do? Minus 2x. You'll have negative 11. Equal, well, I guess you can minus the 5x too. It doesn't really matter, but equals 3x plus 1. Is anyone else like you like to keep the x positive? But like I'm in that camp. Some people are like, no matter what, you move it to the left. Personal preference. Right? Then subtract the 1. And then divide by three. So we get negative four. Now it's okay to have a negative answer as long as when you plug it back in, you don't have a negative inside of the logarithm. But I think this one's going to be an issue. Watch what happens. If you plug in negative four, two times negative four, negative eight minus 11 is negative. You have to get rid of that. And so it's no solution, which is a cool answer. It means no number in the world is going to work. All right, and then last one, these are both LN. That means they're both base E. You're going to set the parts inside of them equal. So x squared minus 3x equals 10. Now, since there's a squared, how do you handle that? What are we going to do with the 10? Evacuate, evacuate, make it all equal zero. Subtract over the 10, and then you can do what? Factor, good, perfect. So it'll be x and x, 10 is gonna be two and five. What symbols will we need on those to get negative three in the middle? Yep, good, plus two minus five. And so we get x equals negative two and positive five. Let's check them. We might get to keep them both, get rid of one, get rid of both, let's see what happens. Negative two squared, that's four, negative two times negative three would be six. Four plus six is positive, so keep that one. If you plug in five, are you gonna get a positive result for that? Five squared, 25, and then it would be minus 15, 10, so we're good. So you get to keep them both. All right, you ready for these formulas? That says log base A of U times V. We're gonna use U and V. So make your U's very curved and your V's very pointy so that you can see the difference, all right? That is log base A of U plus log base A of V. I'm gonna do a proof of this one. A proof means an explanation of how it works. I'm gonna write them all out first, but I'm just gonna prove the first one because they all turn out kind of the same. It comes from your exponent rules. Do you remember a couple of lessons ago when I reviewed those exponent rules and I said, this is gonna come up again? And like half of you glazed over and I was like, you need to listen to me. Remember how when you multiply, you add your exponents? Multiplying means you add your exponents. It is not this. I'm not sure enough. I'm trying my hardest to make you understand this. You did not distribute a log. That's not a thing. And you know how there's like correct and incorrect is a continuum, right? Like there's correct and almost correct. And like you can get some partial credit and that's about half right. And that's not really too much right. That is so wrong that I can give no partial credit if you distribute a log. Do you understand what I'm saying? Do not do that. If you do that, a kitten will die. I don't know what to tell you. Like, don't do that, okay? You can't distribute a log. I'm gonna do the proof, but don't do that. I can't help you if you do that. All right, next one. Log base A of U divided by B, by V. Again, it comes from your exponent rules. When you multiply, you add your exponents. When you divide, what do you do to your exponents? 
subtract, good. So it's gonna be log base A of U minus log base A of V. So multiplying means add them, dividing means subtract them. Log base A of U to the nth power. What do you do when you have a power to a power? What do you do with your exponents then? You multiply them. So you're allowed to bring this n down and just multiply them together. It's n times log base A of u. When you do a power to a power, you multiply them. So it's n times log base A of u. And then the last one, this is called the change of base formula. You don't see this too much anymore, but we used to use it a lot. The A could be anything. So say it was like log base two, but you wanted to change it to log base seven. Like say you had to change the base to something else. You could change it from an A to a B. It would be log base B of U over log base B of A. The reason why we used to need that so much is because the calculator used to only do log base 10 and log base E, LN. It would only do those two. So if you wanted to type in like log base three of seven, nowadays the calculator will just do this. Like you can just type this in a calculator, but it used to be that you would have to change it to log of seven over log of three and type it in this way because you didn't have a button that would do this. You understand what I'm saying? So it's kind of antiquated, but I still always throw it in there just to, I'll show you. All right, I'm just going to prove the first one because the others are really similar. Let x equal this and y equal this. Let's change them to exponential form. What is the base? A. It is a to the x would equal u. And for this one, a to the y will equal v. So here's how a proof works. And some of you might go on to higher level mathematics and take proof classes in college where you have to prove things. Um, it's kind of like, I didn't care for it too much, but some people really like it. It's kind of like doing a puzzle. We're gonna start with this side of the equation, the log base A of U times V. And we're gonna work until we get the right side of the equation. Like I'm gonna show that this equals this. So log base A of U times V, all right, equals log base A. All right, what did we just say U equals? U is equal to what? A to the X times V, which we just said equals A to the Y. Now we are multiplying those. When you multiply, that means you add your exponent. It would be a to the power x plus y. When you multiply, you add your exponent. Now look what's going to happen. Do you see how it's log base a and then an a right there? Those cancel and you just get x plus y. And then look back at the very beginning. What did x equal? The part that's printed on the paper, x equals what? log base A of U plus Y, which is log base A of V. I wish I had a different color here. Let me use the purple pen. So see how this equals this? That's why it's true. That's what a proof is. You're proving that it's true. So you start with one side of the equal sign and you work on it until you get the other side. This would be the exact same proof except with subtraction. So I'm not gonna do, make you write that one down. Do you get what I'm saying? I used to make everybody prove all of them and. Everyone kind of hated me. So I just did the one, the others are similar, okay? So on the back here, we're going to expand, which means write lots of logarithms, all added and subtracted together, and condense, which means just write one logarithm and you're like putting it all back together. It's like doing a puzzle. If you're a puzzle doer, you'll probably like this. One thing I wanted to remember to say is your numerator is gonna be what's positive, your denominator, is gonna be what's negative. When you add and subtract them together. And the reason why is when you multiply, you add, that's positive. When you divide, you get something in the denominator, you've divided, you subtract, and so that's gonna end up being negative. Numerator positive, denominator negative. 
Maybe just watch me do the first one and then I'll give you a chance to copy it down, okay? Do you see how you have a five times y to the third? There's not like that little dot in between, but do you see how those are being multiplied? That means we're gonna add. Multiplying means add, you all with me? So it's gonna be log base two of five plus log base two of y to the third. Do you see how I separated it? I did not distribute a log. I saw that they were being multiplied and I said, okay, I'm gonna add them together. Go ahead and write that down. There's gonna be one more step, but that's the first step. When it's multiplying, you're gonna add. Now, can I evaluate this log base two of five? Two to what power gives you five? Can we do that? No, okay, so that we're just gonna leave. And then this one, do you see how it's y to the third? Power to a power means you multiply. You can take that three and multiply it by the log base two of y. Essentially, you're allowed to take the power and write it out front. And then that's your final answer. If you were like, hey, I didn't quite get that. I'm gonna do a few more. Do you see how these are being multiplied? It's x times e to the x. Multiplying means we're gonna do what? Add. It's gonna be ln of x plus ln of e to the x. I did not, bless you, I did not distribute an ln. That's not a thing. I saw it was multiplication and I said, okay, that means we're gonna add. Can you do anything with ln of x? No, just leave that. How about this one though? What happens to ln and e? Yeah, they cancel and that'll just be x. Those aren't like terms though. You can't put them together. One's an ln of x and one's just an x. So we leave that one. All right, here again, do you see how we're multiplying? It's x squared times square root of all that. That means we're gonna add. So ln of x squared plus ln of square root one minus x. Multiplying means you add. Here, you can take the two and write it out front. So it will be two ln of x plus, now this one has a power as well. When it is a square root, what does that mean the exponent is? It's been a minute. It's a fraction. What is the fraction? One half. So it will be one half ln of one minus x. If it was a cube root, what would be the power? One third. If it was a fourth root, it would be one fourth. Did I put a, a different root? I don't think I did. All right. This one's going to be three separate logarithms. You're going to have one for the x one for the x plus two, and then one for the x plus three squared. The numerator stuff is being multiplied. Those are gonna be positive. It'll be log of x plus log of x plus two. But the one that's being divided, what are we gonna do to that? Subtract. And it will be two log of x plus three. How did I get that? Where did that two out front come from? That's the exponent. Are you getting the hang of it? All right, one more. This is log base three. All right, look at the numerator. Square root of x. For a square root, what's the power? One half. So it's one half log base three of x. Now let's do the x minus four cubed. It's in the denominator. We're dividing. So what are we going to do? Add or subtract? Subtract and it'll be minus what? Good, the three comes out front. Three log base three, x minus four. And now we're gonna do the x plus two cubed. It's also gonna be subtracted, why? It's in the denominator and it'll be minus I think you mixed up the two and the three. It'll be minus, there we go. Three log base three, X plus two, cool.
A lot of twos and threes in that one. That was a little tricky. You getting the hang of it? Expanding it all out. Now we're going to do that in reverse. We're going to squish it all back together. That means you should only write log once. When you're condensing it, you should only write log one time. So this will be log base three. And you can take or leave my advice, but I'm not going to give you bad advice. Here's what I usually do. I draw a fraction bar. Anything positive goes on the top. Anything negative goes on the bottom. So I'll, just, I'll put parentheses there. Like give it a hug. Draw a fraction bar. This is going to go up top. So x to the fourth goes in the numerator. x to the seventh goes in the denominator. The most common mistake is people will put a negative with that x to the seventh. It's not negative. It just means it's in the denominator. Subtracting means you divide it. Now that you can reduce x to the fourth over x to the seventh. What is that going to reduce to? Because some of the x's are going to cancel. Good. It'll be x to the negative three, which you can write. That's fine. Or you can write it like that. I would take x to the negative three, though. That means the same thing. All right, this one's ln. You're only going to write ln one time. It's going to be ln of blah, blah, blah. Do you see how it's adding? That means we're going to do what with these? Multiply. Adding means you multiply. Now, one thing is going to cancel there. What can we cancel out? Yeah, the x's are going to cancel. So it's ln x plus 1 over x minus 1. All right, this one, you're only going to write log one time. Draw yourself a fraction bar. Positive stuff goes on the top, negative stuff goes on the bottom. So look at this first one. Do you see that three out front? You're going to take that and put that back as the exponent. We're doing what we did with the expansion, except in reverse. So you're going to end up with x to the second to the third. x squared, bless you, to the third. That'll be x to the what? Good, that'll be x to the sixth. The next part is subtracted. It's not gonna make the answer negative. It just means you're gonna put it where? In the denominator, good. And you can take that two and put it back. So it'll be x to the fifth to the second. So x to the 10th. And then where does the last part go? On the top or on the bottom? Good, why? Positive. You would put that one third back as the exponent. X to the one third means cube root. And then the only other thing you can do is reduce these X's. You would end up with X to the fourth in the denominator. I didn't lie to you when I told you you were gonna need those exponent rules. It's like what all of this is based on. All right, one more. You're only going to write log base four one time. Draw a fraction bar. For this first part, that two gets put back as the exponent. So you have to square five x cubed. That will give you 25 x to the sixth. Next part goes in the denominator because it's negative and you're gonna put the one half back. Two the one half means what? Good, it is square root two X plus three. There's nothing you can do to that. So just leave it. And then these, I just threw these on here so we could use that change of base formula. If you change it to base E, that means you're gonna do LN. This would be LN of 37 over ln of five. Those are equivalent statements. And again, we used to have to do that because the calculator didn't have a log base three button. Now they've programmed it so it'll just do it. But back in the day, we, all we had was base e or base 10. So this one would be log of what? Yeah, it's log base 10. So log of which number? 41, good, over 
log of three. And again, that used to be how you had to write them in the calculator. 